brother, my baby sister. What is it? What do you think? Boy or girl? Okay. Do you want My dear one? Wait. Oh, babe. I don't want you to prepare mentally. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, go in. Okay, go in. Put on the rock, Papa. Papa, go. Papa, go. Where is it, I mean? On the bed. <laughs> Are you serious, babe? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah! You're getting a sister! Hey, Jill, you don't even understand that. <laughs> oh my gosh! Are you serious? Oh my goodness! Oh. Hey, Jill doesn't know what's going on. One, two, three. <laughs> hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl butterfly here and i am back with another video if you are new here thank you for popping by i hope you like it and i hope you stay i hope you learn something despite what the video is about and if you are returning thank you for your continuous support um, I do hope that you continue to stay on this channel and be a part of the butterfly family So as you can see from the title, it's been exactly a year Since we have lost our baby girl since the anniversary today is the anniversary of our baby girl and I'm actually pre-recording this a day before because I know that I personally will not be strong enough to do this tomorrow and I've literally just been hanging on by a thread the last few days, um, especially because I'm alone in a foreign country without um, my physical support system here with me in this place, not like in my home, in my apartment. Um, however, I am very grateful that um, they're just a phone call away, so I'm just a drive away actually so i just wanted to share this video with you more as a memory remembrance for us to honor her and to remember her and but also just to to share my experience and what i have learned in the last 12 months without our baby girl we have made it to 365 days as my sister said we are still intact we are still breathing we are still praising god it is very difficult um but we are here so the previous video i just shared was the day that i found out she was a baby girl this was about three weeks four weeks um before she was born my husband as always knew, knew the gender i didn't want to know but towards the end i was like okay it's fine i can you can set up a surprise one day and then i came from work and then i found this balloon hanging on the door saying boy or girl i didn't show the whole video um the actually initial video of my reaction and the whole of it because well it was just a bit more personal for me for us especially in the environment um but yeah i found out there was so much excitement and obviously the excitement of knowing she was a baby girl was short-lived but we still praise god for her life because there was so much that was birthed from just the loss and the pain of that child so anyways um this is a a journal i have i have been journaling in this book for a year i got it as a gift from a friend it's written remembering baby promise i don't know if you can see that 
um and at the top it says second corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 which was actually where baby promise came from for those of you that have followed me for a while my son was baby promise i mean baby purpose um that was actually from many are the plants of alpha uh, many are the plants in the man's heart but the lord's purpose shall prevail that's a proverbs 19 21 if i'm not mistaken and she was baby promise and it came from this particular verse I hope my voice will be loud enough. I'm trying to not speak, not even like I'm trying. I am trying to speak loud, but I guess because of how I'm feeling also, it's it's a bit hard. I'm trying to not cry throughout this video so that I can get to the end of it. So I just wanted to show, share with you some things I had written in this video. Um, I won't write, read obviously everything because some things are personal, but there are certain things I will share for the sake of hoping that it does speak out to someone. And I hope that someone that has gone through or is going through a similar experience would would also found, find it therapeutic to do this. I was writing some letters to my baby. I was writing some letters to God. I was writing some letters to myself. So at the beginning of this uh, book, I, I just wrote down about what happened that day. I'm not going to repeat it because I have shared it already on my actual video of sharing that we lost our baby girl. Isaiah Carissa Hafoletu. Isaiah meaning God is listening. Carissa meaning um, grace or kindness. And Hafoletu meaning our joy was born on the 20th of January at exactly 9.23 in the morning. Weighed 2.19 kg. She wasn't with us for very long. And this is why even at the beginning of this journal when I wrote down her names, uh, which is also what, what we put on the thank you card for that we sent to our loved ones after her funeral which was five days after her passing i wrote one of my favorite lines which is what i put on all her things even those that never fully blossom bring beauty to the world and carissa has brought so much beauty to our world even through the pain so psalm chapter 30 verse 11 to 12 this was a verse that was read in church the first first day i went back to church after losing her which was exactly one month after she passed uh, it says you have turned my morning into joyful dancing you have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy that i might sing praises to you and not be silent oh lord my god i will give you thanks forever and they played the song i'm um, trading my sorrows this verse really really went with me for the rest of the year trying to turn my morning into joyful dancing even when it was painful 2023 was a very painful year it was a very hard year but i am so grateful for the support system that i had because honestly i do not know how i would have made it through and honestly to all my loved ones who will even be watching this i am so so grateful to you guys and even those of you that i i don't know who are just my cyber family i'm so grateful because some of your messages that come in they come in on a day that i probably really needed to hear that so i'm really really grateful there's a day i wrote down um a letter to her i said Today, I miss you so much. Today, I really wish you were here. I really want you. It's only been four days since your EDD, which was on the 3rd of March, 2023. 03, 03, 2023. What a beautiful date it was. As I'm sitting here, I'm wondering how many more weeks I have ahead. And I'm asking myself, what am I going to do with all this time? I wake up, what stuff to distract myself? I'm on this maternity leave without a baby. I'm going through postpartum blues without you. By now, I would be exhausted from night feeds, changing diapers, you crying, but in, of you, you crying, but instead I just go by aimlessly daily. Sometimes my, I find drops of milk on my arm. I find drops of milk on my arm, which is just a short reminder, a small reminder that I just recently gave birth. What's strange is like my body was ready for that stage. I can't sleep deep at night unless medicated. 
my body almost automatically wakes up every two hours ready to feed but instead i go and pee by now i will be dreading going back to work leaving your home i miss you Melo, so much your loss is a your loss is reminding me to be so grateful and not complain much especially when it comes to pregnancy at this point i would have the first trimester fatigue the food aversions the hunger the nausea i would still have the third trimester pelvic diastasis the discomfort the gastric reflex the penguin walk the fatigue i would have it all gladly because i i would know it will be preparation to get my child i would not complain about night feeds the fatigue the pumping baby crying and all that comes in the fourth trimester i would choose that all i would choose all that over this i pray the lord will bless us again and i don't care about the struggles that may come with a pregnancy i just need god to restore my joy the bible is the bible is what i checked for what restore is psalm chapter 51 verse 12 have a finger valley the half a leg will be for lawyer over and be the denge over and be the denge name no me boy do liko which says restore to me the joy of your salvation and then on another day i wrote to myself dear d i know you are feeling a lot of pain and a lot of guilt but i need you to forgive yourself you did the best you could to bring your daughter into the world but remember, no one is more powerful and more knowing than God. Her birth and her death was already written. You are not that powerful to alter that, nor to determine the when and especially the how. I know there are certain things that you wish you could have done differently. You did nothing wrong. You would never intentionally harm your baby. You are not perfect, yes, but you love perfectly and you loved her. I need you to know you did nothing wrong. You did not cause her death. You did not choose this. Please forgive yourself and know that you are not a bad mother or a bad wife. You did your best. You do your best. And you are still going to do your best when God blesses you again. Carissa is okay. She's perfectly fine in the arms of the Lord, where she is safer than here on earth. And one day you will be reunited again. Noelle, you will be all right. God is still listening. Please forgive yourself. There is nothing you could have done to save her. I love you. I had to write the forgiveness letter to myself um, as advised by my therapist. And that's obviously because with grief, there are different stages. There's guilt, there's anger, there's all this. And it's natural, especially for a mother, to come to this point and wonder what could you have done wrong. And for me, being in the medical profession, you get questions where... It's almost like the other person is like, but didn't you realize or didn't you feel this? Or why didn't you go to the doctor earlier? Or why didn't you know all these things? But it's not even like there was something that I could have done, especially now looking back. There can be a lot of guilt and a lot of anger. And she even told me one day that if you are angry, you can be angry at God because he can take it. God is the one person or the one who is almighty that can take all of our emotions and all of what we feel, obviously respectfully. So, but you can, if you want to be angry, you can ask God, you know, you might not get the answers, but he's the one that you have to direct those questions to. Um, there was also a day I just wanted to share where there's a friend of mine. She doesn't live here. She lives in the UK she sent me some videos to watch and a long 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 voice note i'm just gonna share a few of the things that she did mention or were in that video particularly that did speak out to me in that moment um this pastor pastor nathaniel was um the one who was preaching in that video that she sent me he said something that said respect those who have failed not everyone fails failure is an asset when you can turn it to power Paul said, let no man trouble me. It is not only anointing that I have, there are scars. I guess paraphrase is Galatians 6 chapter, Galatians chapter 6 verse 17. And then I wrote down that God calls pain favor. There is glory through the scar. There is something about the voice of God you cannot hear until you are at your lowest moment. 
There is a pain requirement to hear certain things about God. There is a pain requirement that brings out the clarity and beauty of God. Time alone does not turn pain to joy. You must bridge time with wisdom. Men with great wisdom are men with unexplainable pain. And obviously she sent that and she shared a lot of other things in the voice note that were for me. And I chose to use that pain to glorify God. I chose to use the time of that grief and going through that grief to seek wisdom from God, especially on what to do with it. Because there are times when I just felt like it's like an uncontained ocean. Honestly, you don't know today if you're going left, if you're going right, you don't know. You really just don't know how you even feel or how to put it in words, even if someone had asked you. Um, Isaiah chapter 66 verse 9, the NCV version, it says, In the same way, I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born, says the Lord. If I cause you the pain, I will not stop you from giving birth to your new nation, says your God. God can bring you purpose and hope, not in spite of our pain, but through it. That is something that I wrote down that I guess I was telling myself that day. A lot of other letters that I had written to my daughter, I had written to myself, but I just wanted to share those ones specifically because um, I do know the struggles of forgiving yourself when you think you did something wrong. Personally, I'm someone that forgives very easily other people, but I struggle with forgiveness for myself so many times. There are times when I have nothing to even do with it, but I'll still blame myself and it'll still take me long to get to the point of forgiveness. Um, there's a book that a friend of mine bought for me, uh, Divine Disruption by the Evans Family. I wrote down a lot of things from that book that I just wanted to read as well and share. One of them is, I'll just read in order. Life has been interrupted, but we have to believe there's a divine message in the disruption somehow. One that could save our lives and ultimately bring us closer to each other and God. No one is above the struggles of life. In the midst of tra tragedy, there was trust. In the midst of painful moments, something beautiful was taking place. We hurt and struggle and fall and get back up again. Only by grace and God's help do we find the strength. How do we balance the goodness of God with the tragedies of life? How do you keep going? And then the pastor, the, their father replied, because I believe what I preach. Where, I, where would I be in a situation like this without an anchor? I believe in the sovereignty and goodness of God. And because I believe, I keep going. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29 says that God has secret things. It's so funny because somewhere in the back of this book, like pages later, I had written down notes when I was listening to a sermon by um, Pastor Fertig's wife. I'm trying to find... Oh, Holly Fertig. She said, if sometimes your question to God is why, when, how much longer, sometimes God answer, God's answer is, it is not for you to know. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 says the secret things are not revealed to us. Not knowing is the faith part. Waiting is the faith part. Maybe I'm not supposed to know. So when I just stood now when I was reading this before I started recording, I saw that and then I saw that like months apart and it was the same verse that I wrote down in this book. And I'm just like, thank you God for that reminder that I might have many questions, but sometimes it's just not for me to know. Um, the other points was, but if I have God, then evil has to flow through his fingers before it can get to me. Even when things seem out of control, I have hope that God is in control. For believers, the present is not life. This is only an introduction to life. We can keep the right perspective in our pain. We can offer praise in the midst of our tears. Like the Apostle Paul, we can pray at midnight while still in chains when the storm is raging. Trust God. Always remember, through thick and through thin, that you are here to serve the purpose of God. Sometimes God allows discomfort and distress because he wants us to move in, to move in close to him. This is similar to something that I shared um, this week on my status where I said, um, it was actually a revelation more from home self when I went this week that God doesn't break me in order to show me that he can heal 
God heals me when I am broken. He doesn't need to show his power by having to break me. God restores what has been stolen. He doesn't have to steal from me. So already just reading that, I'm just like, he does allow these things to happen. He allows the pain, he allows the discomfort, he allows the distress. But the greater purpose really is just for us to get closer to God. Trials bring, bring blessings too. And truly, there's been a lot of blessings for me in this trial, in this period. I have never fought for myself more than I did this year or the last year. And I've never been more determined for my family to follow our dreams and all that more than I did in this season. It's almost like I was a, a go-getter with no fear. I, was, I just keep telling myself like, I've already gone through the greatest pain I could go through this year. I'm not afraid of rejection. I'm not afraid of any other pain. I even when people, even when there are people that I say, it's like say rejection from humans. I was just like, it is okay. There is nothing more painful than losing my daughter. So I was not afraid of losing people in that sense of like, say a friend or a colleague or someone at work treating me bad or wanting to walk out of my life type of thing. It was just like, yeah, I'm human. I will be touched, but it's like, it's okay. We keep on moving. Um, keep going. The enemy would take too much pleasure in our discouragement and defeat. Despite the way we felt, we refused to cave into fear, anxiety, or a decrease in faith. It's good to be strong and of good courage, but it's okay to be human too. Jesus too cried. I would rather err on the side of faith and discouragement. I would rather go down, believe in God. There is a time to help others and a time to let others help you. And, and truly, I, I pride myself in my loyalty to my loved ones. I pride myself to my commitment to my relationships and my friendships. Um, but also I pride myself with the quality of people that I have in my life and truly, truly, truly in this season, I've been blessed with the best. I have been, there are certain people that obviously would be there at the beginning of the grief process and all that, but then there are times that people, and I too have learned that grief is not a switch, like an on and off switch that, oh, it's been two months now, the person is fine. It's an ongoing process and there are still people that, even in November would ask me, how are you doing? How are you coping? And I love that because it's a reminder. It, mean, it just shows you that the person knows that you have gone through this loss and you're still going through the process of it. And they are not just there for that particular, like for just at the beginning of it. So it has also just reminded me that when someone around me or someone I know goes through a loss, it doesn't mean that just because it's been six months or it's one year, they are healed now or they are okay. Or because we see videos and pictures of them smiling and happy and going out, <clears throat> that the pain is gone. So checking in here and there really, really, really helps. And I'm so grateful that I have that around me. Obviously, it's not many people, but I'm not even one of those people who like, yeah, fake friends be what? I don't have fake friends. I just have people in my life who love me and have been there for me and obviously those that the season of it has ended so it's fine um another thing i wanted to share was a sermon i was listening to um by sarah jakes it's breakthrough the, the noise i noted down something when she said what most people call the breaking point is actually the listening point what some people get to a breaking point and they stay shattered God, I need you to speak a word to me in this breaking point. God is trying to say something to you that you can only hear if you're at your breaking point, out of your ego, your shame, your, your insecurities. There is something that happens when we get desperate to hear from God. And most of the time, it only happens in our breaking point. And that transformation that takes place is when I say that, is when I say that breaking point will not break what's inside of me that God put. God, I'm ready. That's when I, that's when what you went through becomes a weapon. When you get to that point, when you say, God, I'm ready. Breaking is not the end. It is a point of transformation. This is my listening season. I want to hear what God is saying to me in this season. God answers prayers, but he doesn't talk on top of us. So we have to actually be in, in a posture of just listening. Create space in your prayer life for God to talk back to you.
when God gets ready to amplify something in the world, he will always use the least likely person because the least likely person leaves no room except God must have been with them. God must have touched them. God must have transformed them. God can amplify from the least likely. And that touched me because there are times when I did feel like the least likely in the sense that you get, like I said, you get questions like, oh, but you're a doctor. Like, didn't you feel pain? I mean, placenta rupture presents in very different way. I had a concealed one, unfortunately. Yes, I did have pain here and there, but it was not your classic picture. So you would think I do most least likely happen to a doctor because they would know what to do or what to feel or when to go to a doctor and all those things, but it wasn't. And honestly, I would rather use that test for a testimony and I know, I know, I know one day I will testify of God's goodness and God's grace and God's mercy in this season and how he is going to restore our joy. He's going to restore everything that the enemy has stolen from us. I mean, the enemy has to repay somehow, someday. Okay, the last thing I wanted to share is from something I written down from Stephanie Ike. She said, knowing why doesn't set you free. Knowing me sets you free that was deep and profound for me it just came back from that sermon again that i had written down about um from what holy um holy fertig was saying about um the secret things are for god like we don't have to know everything um do you want god to answer your question or do you want god to heal your heart even when we can't see the hand of god at least may we trust the heart of god the unknown and uncertainty keeps our humility. If your worst nightmare happened, envision it, would it end you? What would your life look like? That should remind us that we don't own anything. We don't own tomorrow. We are only stewards of what we have in our now. Recognizing that, God, I would still have you. Yes, that is difficult. It is very hard, but I know you'll get through the tough times and that is healing. Even Job said, the very thing I feared has happened to me. And sometimes we have to release that because it then becomes our worship. If our faith in the Lord is only to protect us from what we dread, are we worshiping him or it? And are we using him as a buffer to say, God, please don't let this happen to me. I'm a child of God. So let's recognize that at the end of the day, God is still good. No matter what may come our way, it may be difficult, but God will see us through. For me, God did show up in the moment. Even in disappointment when my life felt shattered and felt like tomorrow is just going to be another dark day. When will I ever see the sunshine and the rainbow again? God showed up in the moment. Um, there are a lot of unshared and unspoken battles I've had to go through last year. And a lot of them are happening again this year, especially because... I'm now at a time where a lot of people that I was pregnant with then are celebrating their children's first birthdays. And already this week, I saw two and the, me, the other two girls were at a baby shower together last year. We were pregnant at the same time. We were, yeah, we were at the baby shower. And so this week would have been the birthdays of all three of us as baby. Obviously, mine came a bit earlier than the initially planned but seeing posts of their first their daughter's first birthdays was just like oh wow i wish that was us and me and my husband for those who know us we know we love celebrating we love parties we probably would have thrown a very big birthday party for our baby girl but yeah here we are um i'm on a new journey now um with this new journey that i've embarked on i'll share another video another Honestly, the videos were supposed to come in order, but because this is meant for today, everything else will make sense in the other videos. But I really just wanted to share my journey with you. I'm very proud of myself that I got to the end of this video without crying. And this is also why I needed to read. I'm sorry that a lot of times I was looking down reading, but I needed to read for me to get through this and also just share with you how the last 12 months have been. I do pray that if you are going through this, that the Lord will be your light, that you will see that light um, in this very, very dark season. It will get better, not easier necessarily. It's it's really one of those things that tomorrow may seem like you have taken a hundred steps back <clears throat> and then tomorrow you might actually take two steps forward. 
um but just know that you are never alone god is with you jesus cried cried as much as cry as much as you can if you have to if you have a loved one that is going through a similar pain please be there for them um it doesn't even have to be it, like, there shouldn't be a timeline to it honestly it doesn't mean that because it has happened six months ago that you should stop asking how they are doing or how they are coping or just popping in or sending a little scripture sending a little prayer here and there you don't know that might be on one of their worst days that week and you might be um uplifting them so i'm so honored and blessed to have been the mother of this amazing and beautiful and very very angelic baby girl my mom even said um like she just came ready to go up to the heavens and i'm happy that i'm saved i'm happy that i'm a christian that the greatest the greatest comfort i think in all of this is that one day i will get to see my daughter as she's sitting right now there next to jesus my baby advocate um yeah so thank you guys for tuning in thank you for coming to the end of this video if you've made it this far um i am doing okay despite the tears i even said i'm happy i didn't cry but i'm doing okay god has been faithful god has been good um my family and i are okay for the most part we are really okay we are really 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 grateful we have a, such an amazing support system i'll never stop stressing that i'll never stop being grateful for that so yeah thank you once again for supporting me don't forget to like and to subscribe and to share and honestly you guys are just watching and you're not subscribing you should do the subscriptions and if you see any ads don't skip the ads but yeah I've come to the end of this video. I'll see you in another one. Until next time, from me, Butterfly, goodbye.